Hello AACPS teachers and welcome to the updated revised vodcast on the Office of Instructional Technology Paper to Digital Project. One of the things that we have been working on our, in our office for the last few years is uh, showing teachers and students how they can take projects traditionally done with paper and pencil and complete them on digital platforms and how many more features they can add and all the approved platforms that they can use um, to get into those digital projects. So as some of you guys watch this video, you might be thinking, well, Wow, this sounds familiar. I think I've seen this someplace before. And you would be correct. In the past, what we have provided whenever we shared our paper to digital project is the Google Doc that you currently see on the screen. But as this Google document has grown and as we have added to it, what we have come to realize is that really what we created with this document, linking to other documents that then link to other documents, is essentially a website. And if it's going to continue to grow, it needs to function the way that a website would. So we have updated and revised this to make it exactly that, a very user-friendly website that still has access to all of the same uh, resources that we had in the Google Doc previously, but it's going to function a lot better for our users. So in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to navigate this new website and find those resources. So whether you are new to our paper to digital project or whether you are a veteran who was using that Google Doc for some time, you should be able to comfortably get into this site and navigate without any trouble. So right here on the left hand side we have the why you should consider going from paper to digital. On the right we have a link under how it works to this exact video that you're watching right now and then if we scroll down just a little bit we have two options for how you can navigate on this site right away. One of them is if you know the project type that you want your students to use you can go straight into the search the site by projects option and then on the right hand side if you know certain programs or applications that your students are familiar with and you want to see which projects are available uh, with those applications or recommended with those applications, you can search the site by the applications themselves. If we go to the top where we have the menu, you'll see both of those options right here with a drop down underneath. So if we go to the by projects option, we have all of the projects listed underneath. So what we have done is tried to think of many of the different project types that teachers traditionally have students creating. Things like book covers, comic strips, infographics, narratives, posters, and so on. We even have a variety of what would be considered 21st century projects, like maybe you want to have your students create a website or a social media profile or a meme. So lots of different projects types represented here under the by projects menu option. If we hover over by apps you can see all of the different applications that are featured somewhere on this site. So things like Canva, Discovery Ed's Board Builder, Inspiration, Make Beliefs Comic, Nearpod, Smart Notebook, Wixi, and so on. We even have the headings for Google and Microsoft where you will find the applications specifically within that that platform, like if we expand Google, you can see that we have um, recommended projects for Google Docs, Drawings, Google Earth, Forms, Google Sheets, and so on. And if we go back, you'll see that we have the same options under Microsoft for all of the different applications within the Microsoft universe that students could use to create projects. So let's go back to the My Projects and take a little bit of a deeper look here. We're going to grab the comic strips project type and if you click on that what you'll come to is a page where we have embedded what we have called a matrix and let's go ahead and click here to expand that document and on this matrix across the top we've picked out several of the different platforms or applications available to teachers and students in the district that lend themselves nicely to making a comic strip. So if you wanted students to make comic strips these are the things that we would recommend. They work well and we know that they're all approved. So you've got Google Drawings, Google Slide, 
Make Believe Comics, Microsoft PowerPoint, Read Write Think, Smart Notebook, and Wixie. And if we look down the columns under each of those different applications, we've tried to highlight the features and tools that are or are not available with each of these different applications. So how do the students access them? Is it online or offline? Which devices could students use in order to create in that platform? And then additional things that will change on each of the matrices that you look at. Is it collaborative, meaning could students work together or is it one student working on one screen? Do they support text, images, in the case of comic strips, how many panels can be included? Does it allow audio clips, voice recording, hyperlinks, and so on down the list? As you get to the bottom of each matrix, you'll find things like samples, examples, and even resources that we have available for this particular project or building this particular project in that application. If we return to the top of the document, you'll find a hyperlink on each of these matrices that says click here for how to create this project type in each platform. And if we click on this link, what we open are a set of task cards that we created specifically for this project. So each of those different applications, Google Drawings, Google Slides, Make Believe Comics, and so on, have their own task card that could teach teachers or students how to make a comic strip in Google Drawings, for example. So step-by-step -step instructions in this task card. Now for our office, as we wrote each of these task cards, our audience was teachers, but anybody who opens this file can easily make a copy of it and then modify this task card for their students. So every matrix links to a set of task cards that can help teachers or students learn how to create that project in each of the different applications or platforms highlighted on that matrix. So I'm going to close out of this document for now and return us to the website. So for any of the projects, if you click on them, you will get to a matrix exactly like this that showcases the different uh, applications that we would recommend and then which features and tools are supported in that application. But as we said, that's not the only option for searching the site. I can also search by apps. So maybe I know that my students have used the Discovery Education Board Builder in the past they've liked it, I've had good results from it, and I want to see which projects would work well with students using the Board Builder. And we can see here that in the Discovery Ed Board Builder we're recommending project types such as posters, social media profiles, and timelines. If you click on any of these links it takes you exactly back to the page that opens up the matrix. So we're on the posters page and right here the matrix for posters loads with not only Discovery Ed Board Builder but all of the other applications that we would recommend for posters. So you can compare it with something else that students could use instead. The other information that you'll find on the applications page, at the top it tells you a little bit about the application. So maybe you clicked on Discovery Ed Board Builder, not because you have familiarity with it, but because you wanted to learn a little bit more about it. So right there at the top you get that little blurb, just a couple of sentences about what the Board Builder is, how it works, and so on. You'll also find on each of these pages an embedded set of task cards for how to use this application. Once again, we have that option here in the corner to click to expand or open up that task card. Just like the task cards that we saw with each project type, these are written specifically for teachers, but anybody could make a copy of this and then modify it to uh, make the language a little bit more user-friendly for your students. And also, just like the set of task cards that we looked at for each project, this is a Google Slides presentation, meaning it's not just a page for the Discovery Ed Board Builder, but if we click to go to the next slide, you can see that it's alphabetically listed each of the applications that we are featuring somewhere on our paper to digital site. So you get a task card here on how to use Google Docs, followed by one on Google Drawings, Google Sites, and so on alphabetically down the list. So a full set of task cards in a Google Slides presentation. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and return us to the site.
You'll also find a page at the top for teachers. It is our digital classroom comparison. So instead of focusing specifically on the student projects, maybe how to get links out to the students for these different projects. And one of the things that we had uh, come up a couple of years ago when we started implementing Google Classroom in the district, people would ask, so does that mean that Edmodo is going away or no longer available? And the answer was no, Edmodo is still available. There's just different reasons to use Edmodo instead of Google Classroom. So right here we've picked out the four different digital classrooms that are supported in AACPS. We have Blackboard, Edmodo, Google Classroom, and Microsoft Teams. And just like you saw with the project matrix, what we've done is tried to highlight the features that are and are not available so that if you're considering a digital classroom and you haven't yet selected one, you would know why you might prefer to use one over another. For example, Edmodo allows um, parents and teachers to communicate with each other. However, the other three platforms do not. You'll also see that Edmodo and Blackboard would both allow a teacher to share outside of AACPS. Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams do not. So the Digital Classroom platform uh, matrix here is really a resource mostly for our teachers if they're looking at going digital with their class. Classroom. Similarly, we have a page in the upper right on our menu to go uh, giving feedback digitally. And that will show you on the matrix many of the platforms supported in the district that have options to give students some sort of feedback. So if you have them doing projects in Blackboard, Discovery Education, Edmodo, Google Classroom, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Microsoft Teams, or Wixi, here's all the options that you have for um, file submission types, uh, how the teacher gets notified, numeric grades, peer editing, and so on. Which of these features are supported and not supported in each of these different platforms to allow teachers and students to give feedback. Our last stop on our menu here is our FAQ page. So if you have questions as you are looking at this revised and updated digital projects uh, website, a lot of those can be answered here. Um, how to use the paper to digital materials that are there in addition to this video. Uh, we've got several options there. Um, how to make copies of the different resources that are there. Should all student projects be done uh, digitally? Um, if you have an idea for projects that aren't listed, how can you submit that? Who can you contact? And then if you have questions about the specific platforms or applications themselves, we've got some resources here that will help you get more familiar with any of those applications. So the last thing that is really important to cover in this video is how do you get to this new paper to digital website? And the answer is ClassLink. So if you are on your ClassLink page, as you see mine here, what we created over the summer for everyone is a folder called Instructional Tech Resources. You can see here under my cursor, it's kind of this purplish blue color. And when you click on this folder, the paper to digital website is right here listed among the applications shared with you by instructional technology. And that will take you directly to the website. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching this vodcast.